Welcome to the Learning About Dogs podcast with Kay Lawrence and Frances McCormack and introducing her new collie puppy, Nika. This series is going to be focusing on all those questions that arise when you try and survive that first year with a new puppy. Okay, so welcome back again to Early Days with a very excitable, cute, charming young lady who is working very hard to get her own way through life, as a lot of little princesses do. And my <laughs> puppy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. Yeah. Um, so what I want to have a look at and unpack a little bit is y- you will have to say no. You know, there's, there's not going to be this, this sort of, um, oh, I want to be positive and let them live this free life where they can do anything they want all the time. It's not fair on the dog and it's not for the benefit of the dog, but it's also going to make life hell in about six months time. Yes. And at that point, if you have to say no, it's going to come down with such a crash, you know, that it's Mm. seriously going to impact your relationship. So what might be quite a bit of a no and a oh now is Mm. going to save you from a no, not a chance in hell and never again in six months time. You know, they have this wonderful phrase about um, if a dog runs free off lead up to 12 months old, then it'll be on lead for the next 12 years. Mm. And if it's on lead up to 12 months old, then it will probably be able to run free for the rest of its life. It's a bit of a sort of, um, you know, a catchphrase thing. But it's like, yeah, if you let a juvenile animal of any species live wild, mm. you won't want to live with that dog when it's an adult. So what what has your no list been over the last two or three weeks? Oh, well, I mentioned on the pod, the last podcast about a trip to the pharmacy. Um, and that resulted from the fact that Nika is very excited when it's time to, to greet. And she stands on her hind legs and she scratches and she claws. But she also does this first thing in the morning when she sees me and I'm horizontal. Um, and she at that That day, she dived on my face and scratched my eye. Well, almost scratched my eye, landed on my eye. Uh, Thankfully, there wasn't a scratch, but I I ran to the pharmacy just to make sure that I had um, some eye drops just in case. So that's been a a, a big piece of, of learning for us both in terms of thinking about how do we do this in in such a way that I'm avoding the route of just ignoring it and it'll go away Um, because that's just it's just horrible um but also how do I make sure that she has skills in place to seek alternatives to that so that was that's been a big one and certainly the first time it happens you're likely to go oh and have a bit of a freeze and I wasn't expecting this and I hadn't planned what to do but this is why we practice often our fire drills, you know. So yes. what might seem not too bad with a 10 or 11 week old puppy, you know, when she's six months old and doing that, you know, you're, mm. you're not going to survive very easily. Um, yeah. And it's very often a perfectly normal behaviour. You know, when you watch a puppy put their feet up to an adult's face, it's both feet and a lot of mouthing and... You know, dogs are much faster in their reflexes of their eyes, so they get more protection from this puppy coming out their face. But seeking approval around the head end of an adult dog is absolutely normal, which is why we get so much jumping up with dogs, because they want to get up to our faces, Mm. um, because that's where approval comes from. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so how are you managing this? What are you doing instead? Well, she wants to get up to my face, so the solution is not to make sure that she sits down at my feet and can't get anywhere up near my face. <laughs> it's instead to invite her up to a place where she can be near my face and where we can have that greeting at the level that she wants. So she's getting the rewards that she wants, but it's safe for us to do so. So yes. I've invited her. We have a phrase, up high for cuddles, which she learned very, very quickly. And she and Tiernan both race in. They jump on the arm of the sofa. She jumps on the back. Tiernan jumps on the arm. And I put my face down to them, and they both there greet me there. Yeah, okay, okay. So um, when you're probably not in reach of the sofa, we mm-hmm. used to teach. So, you know, if the dog's on a lead or a harness, 
um, you take your hand going downwards and you just slip your thumb vertically down into the collar or harness so that any upward movement is against the straight of your arm mm -hmm. and then you would bend over and take your face down to the puppy within smelling distance mm. <laughs> you know not the full-on um i can grab and bite your face yes which yes. They, they like to do but certainly they want proximity to your face so it's not a question of locking the dog off and keeping your face up high yeah. but taking your face down but making sure it's safe you know yes. so having your hand shield in such a way that you know even from your sofa back she could put her feet on your shoulders and have at it mm. with me and that's that's in the future so you will need a okay. yes okay I, i'll hold on to you and this is what we do you can air lick personally i like the air lick because i don't like Perfect. washing my skin um yeah. Lots of air licking, but yes, you can have proximity to my face, and then we're done. Hey, let's go outside, you know. Mm. And then as soon as we've had like how long, three or four seconds of that will do. That's all they need. Then yes. we can go on to a different activity. Mm. Yeah. So have a fire drill where hello, hello, yes, that's lovely, great, cool, and that's I love you too. Right, everybody outside, you know, everybody down the garden, everybody up here, and then you'll travel somewhere else because why they're busy running together and traveling to the garden or the toy box or whatever it is the whole greeting thing is now passed and we right. have something else to focus on so it's a bit of a Excellent. redirect you're not suppressing the behavior but yeah. you're saying to them this is how it can be done for the future mm -hmm. yeah and if you are likely to have children involved in this then it must be supervised absolutely absolutely you know because it's puppies can really hit children in the face badly Not it was really interesting. An intent, just just a, a desire to be at that. And of course, if they're young people that have food on their faces, that makes it even more appealing. Oh goodness, yeah. <laughs> it was interesting to see how Tiernan <laughs> responded to it as well. That he was learning alongside, and he found this just so exciting. Um, you know that that he was going to have this opportunity. He was right in with her. Of course, it's the the two going along together in in many ways. But it was interesting to see how quickly he he learned it as well. Yes, yes. I mean, Zip is, a, again, a, would have at my face at every opportunity. I've only got to p bend over to pick something up and she's like, oh, your face is there. I must come out there. Mother. And when she comes, she can often be a little grabby. She would say, I wouldn't right. say a bite, but she can grab in the sense that when she's excited, the lick often turns into a nibble. Mm. So it's like, a, it can't happen. No, sorry, you can't do this. Um, so, you know, teaching her greeting has been what I call air jumping. I, I don't teach her she can't jump up because she's just so excitable. It's never going to be suppressed and it would just worry her a lot. But she can have my hand and my hand is probably about shoulder height to me. <laughs> and as we go about our business, she will just free jump up and down like a yo-yo to my hand. Oh, love you and I love okay. this. Good, I love you too. That's good. But not my face. Okay, that's fine. So we have, we, we have common ground that's, that's fine. Safe for me. Right. And... A good way out for her but at the moment obviously your puppy won't be able to do the jumping yes but that might be your avenue in the future possibility yes so i'm happy you're home you know what you're looking for is a spring up and down but not into your body mm. yeah um the gordons were class masters that spring up and down and people go oh my god he's big and take a step backwards and the dogs worked out pretty quickly they could shift you that's right. just like, yes, he's going to spring up down, but he won't touch you. Are you, are you sure? Yeah, no, he won't. Okay, fine, that's good. Yeah, and so. how did you go about teaching that, Kay? Um, well, she came to me at five months old, so it was already pretty in at that age. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I did go through quite a bit of trying to hold her and let her do what I call air licking around my face. But as soon as I let go, she'd come up fast. Yes, yeah, so even just going... For, you know the idea of going out for a walk or going somewhere or coming home before we even got as far as the up on a surface it would be this constant up and down up and down up and down okay so let's do it out there don't do it on my body right so she's able if she's trying to jump on your body you want her to teach yes but you jump to my hand which at the moment might be waist height okay Yep, so she jumps, jump here. Yeah, so you hold your arm out at hand height. That's where that's where my hands are, not in the body. Mm. Yeah. We'll check on that and see how it goes. Excellent. Thank but you. yes, two things there. You can't you're not likely to suppress it. You know, she's happy that you're home uh, and she wants um she wants to know that we're okay again. 
So that right. when the pack's been separated, was it something they did that upset you? You know, are we okay? Are we okay? And the mm. more anxious they are, the more they're going to need to know we're okay. So right. if we need approval that, yeah, we're okay, we're good again. <gasps> oh, great, that's fine. That's all you're trying to say. Mm -hmm. Zip takes a lot of persuasion that we're okay. She says, are you sure? Yes, we're okay. Are you really, really sure? Yes, we're okay. Oh, tell me again. We're okay. Yes, we're okay. <laughs> so she's addicted to this reassurance that we're okay. Yes, especially when, you know, first thing in the morning, every morning. Yes, if I've been, it happens every morning. So we divert it onto, let's go and get dinner. Oh, good. So she can spring up and down around the dinner bowl. Oh, yeah, we're mm. okay. Dinner's coming. So that's okay. You know, so having a look for ways for her to feel okay and get reassurance is what you're looking for. Yes. I think that there's a, a, a kind of a cultural narrative of the whole jumping up as being framed as a problem has made people think that it's just not okay for dogs to jump up at all. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I, I like that there, for, for Zip, that you have an alternative where she's able to jump up, which is, is what she she's seeking to do, but just not on me. Yes, yes. And food doesn't cut it. Food doesn't say we're okay. No. So it wouldn't matter how many treats you dump on the floor or how many treats you try and stuff in their mouth for four feet on the floor, is it saying we're okay? And if the four, you know, four feet on the floor and doing treats, 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 it probably wasn't anything to do with the treats or the feet on the floor. It was the fact that you were bending over and giving the dog the attention that they were like, are we okay? So the process right. of that sort of feeling, 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 feeling down here let them feel okay we're good together yeah. we're okay life will go on and that was the important bit for the dog not oh god food as well okay okay that's fine if that makes you happy i'll take your food um <laughs> and it can pretty much stop this distress that some dogs will go through just just tell me are we okay have we got it right yes. are we all right are we friends again you've been apart i'm happy are we friends don't keep ignoring me don't keep walking through mm. me i need you to tell me and you know you'll see this get more and more distressed as the dog's just looking for yeah we're okay we're okay we're good together again especially you know if you've come in and you come in with the shopping or you're in your work clothes or blah 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 blah, blah and you don't have 60 seconds to give the dog on that way in the house Mm. then don't walk in the house right you know be prepared to go 60 seconds leave the shopping outside we're good we're okay everybody's happy i love you again and you're good and you're super and i'm mm, yep yeah, lovely bit of there mm -hmm. right shall we go down the garden cool now you go back out and get the shopping okay. but if you're coming in and trying to manhandle the shopping or manhandle push chairs and prams and all the rest of it and mm. the dog is jumping and leaping and farting around it's not going to resolve by ignoring it it's going to make them more yes anxious that we're not okay because we're being ignored because mm, you can see it escalating you can see when when dogs are are being ignored in that situation they start oh, yes. becoming yes. more frenetic with their movements if they start vocalizing it. it's, it's yeah. ignoring it is, is and they'll throw themselves up in the air often harming themselves as they, they do it just just tell me we're okay i just need to know are we okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anything else that you've had to say no, you can't do that. Oh, I, I do yes. remember um, <laughs> a certain family member who was fascinated on learning how things work, dismantling the vacuum cleaner <laughs> that we'd only had for a few months. And my father being very, very like, uh, how do you put it back together again? And, you know, mom, I don't know. OK, yeah, OK. No, no, you can't dismantle vacuum cleaners because nobody had any <laughs> idea where the parts were or how to put it back together again. <laughs> oh, but I want to learn how things work. Okay, so I do remember him making tremendous collections of what in those days were Meccano sets, you know, these mm -hmm. things where you learned how to build a crane and do all these little bits of piss, put them together. So it was, it was, yeah, okay, I understand what you want to learn. So very often we're having to say no to active learning. Yes. But you then need to channel that to whatever she's doing. You need to take a step back and, okay, what's she trying to learn at this time? Mm. Mm. <laughs> gardening trying to garden oh yes she's trying to garden yeah she's also trying to so one of the things that i've observed about her over the past couple of weeks is that she's learning what brings the rewards in her world she's learning the patterns that predict them and she's getting very excited but she's also trying to make those 
things happen faster when she so when she sees food or when she <laughs> she sees the things that predict food being prepared she will then give us the hurry up or when she knows that there's an outing or there's planned learning it's very much but i want it now i mm. want it now um, do so you know how many ha- collies on a mountain have a middle name called take time <laughs> <laughs> They want the sheep to go faster down the hill, faster, faster, faster. Nice. And the sheep can't really faster because there's 300 of them trying to go through a small gateway. But the collar, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Get faster, faster, faster. <laughs> yep. So take time, dog, take time. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. so, yes. But this is, uh, you know, trying to hurry you up to get on with the job quicker, quicker, quicker mm. is absolutely part of her being a collie. I'm sure, you know, many other yes. types of dogs would like yeah. it, but it's very much part of the collie thing of, no, you can take time. You can learn to wait. Mm. Yeah. So how are you diverting this need to manage you? Well, uh, obviously I want her <laughs> wants and needs to be fulfilled. So it's not a matter of depriving her, but I also don't want her to learn that everything in her environment is under her control because that is that just doesn't have a future for her. As you said, there'll, there'll be a crash. There'll be disappointment and events that don't bring her what she wants. So what I have been doing is trying to break up and interrupt those patterns so that they're now less predictable so that she's not building that excitement and excitement and excitement. It's not going all the way up. So, for instance, um, she's learned that when I bring the platform out into the hall and I bring the tripod out into the hall, that means Tiernan is going to do some planned learning with me and then she gets her turn afterwards. So now I might bring that platform out into the hall couple of hours before we have our planned learning Mm -hmm. session or I might bring the tripod out first or I might tootle around or I might bring her out for a very quick session and then you know so it's not so predictable for her um yeah because the skill she's practicing here is is uh, monitoring your behavior patterns and learning Mm -hmm. your chain of um or your sequence of how you do things that ends in something that's relative to her so that can certainly be channeled in your training. I mean, we'll talk about that in another session is how she's learning to use this skill, which mm-hmm. you will do as part of her learning is when you do A is followed by B is followed by C, which is followed by D, and E is a really good party time. She's going to learn mm. that A, B, C, D sequence very, very quickly. Yes. But there's times then when even the A will start the excitement. And even if you try and divert the pattern and start with C and then go back to A, you're going to get Mm -hmm. explosive. I know what's coming. So there will be a, sure you do, but let's learn the skill of wait there. Yes. You're going to need it. You're going, you know, obviously she's she's explained that you're going to need this already. (laughs) So I, I don't think you can not practice enough wait there for everything. Yes. And it doesn't mean sit, stay. I want to go out the door. Good. Let's see if we can wait there. Two, three, four. Out mm-hmm. you go. Yeah, so only four seconds, five seconds, variable. Wait there mm-hmm. and I will go over here and come back and open the door. Uh, yes. Oh, I, I want to play with you. Okay, wait there until I have finished this sentence on the computer and then I'll go and play with you. Oh, I want my dinner now. Okay, well, wait there whilst I just do A, B, C, D, 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 have a biscuit in between, and now go. You know, you know. So find some some ways of where you can practice. Wait there. Hang on. Perfect. Yeah, that makes sense. Because it, it, it's got to be applied in almost as many situations as possible, so it generalizes naturally. Okay. Um, and waiting there will end up getting its own rewards. Yes. Yeah, so look for all situations that end up in a reward for her and let's see if we can wait there. Mm, mm. You know, even if the I... dinner bowls are ready, do they go straight from where they've been prepared to the floor? We've been trying to uh... interrupt that. It had been. <laughs> and that was one of the key bits of learning that okay. she... Yeah, so right, if she you, learned you that... You a walk. Unless mm. it's absolutely down outside, you take your dinner bowls and you're going to walk... And go down around the garden for a little bit and then back towards the house <gasps> and you can have them here so in other words the actual place they're fed is different as well okay but there's a time gap and a location gap between the dinner bowls coming off that surface and right. consumption so okay. wait there might be a stillness or wait there might be an activity that's done first 
Yes. Yeah. Because I've been noticing... Sorry. Well, I've been noticing that when food appears, she runs straight into her pen. I mentioned a couple of podcasts ago that she goes into the pen to eat because otherwise she'll eat her bowl and try and get Tiernan's as well. Uh Um, But she will run straight in, even if she thinks we have something for her. She'll run straight into her pen. And then over the past couple of days, we've noticed that she's kind of bouncing with excitement. So I like the idea of changing location. Having a, um, you know, having a go to the pen for her food is good, but is she able to wait there for longer and longer before the food actually mm-hmm. arrives and not start coming out and going back and coming out and going back? You know, you can end up with a little bit of a yo-yo on this. Yes. So in other words, the activity of going to the pen is the one that got rewarded as opposed to the activity of going to the pen and waiting gets rewarded. Right. So you can still be going to the pen, but be careful that it's not good to the pen, get the food. Because mm. then the reward is tied to the going. So if it doesn't arrive, the minute she's gone to the pen, she'll come out so she can practice going in again to get the reward. And then you end up with a yo-yo. Yeah, I can see how that Which is the same as the yo-yo lead walking. You know, the dog goes to the end of the lead forwards, you stop, it comes back to your side, it gets a treat, off it goes forwards again so you can Mm. practice coming back to get a treat. (gasps) Yo-yos. Yeah. So yeah, certainly use that. She's on three meals a day still? She's on three, yeah. Yeah. So you've got three times a day to practice. You will get the reward. You can anticipate the reward, but you can't do that behaviour in the anticipation period. Right. So you're looking at generalising anticipation to be stillness, going mm-hmm. to a location, which is her pen, travelling mm-hmm. with you whilst you carry the food. Yes. Or you mm-hmm. could even go to the car when she jumps in the car and has it in the car. You know, so anything you can think of in the future where you may want a reward to be delivered she can every meal time can be a practice of that wonderful we'll work hard you on that this week ring the doorbell with me oh i picked up the dinner bowls the doorbell rings okay let's go down here because somebody's at the door you know so it's such a a it's a highlight of the dog's day the minute you take that food off the side oh it's yes. coming and teaching them to channel the anticipation or the arousal that's coming with the anticipation for longer periods and into a certain activity that they can enjoy is is absolutely critical for her learning her nice. learning discipline if you like but yeah anything that she's she's practicing managing you um mm. yeah it, it's got to be oh you think about that that's not going to be good in six months time I remember doing a talk a long, long time ago about what gift could you give somebody going into this business. And I said, the difference between recognising a behaviour in a young dog, don't worry about that, that's going to fade naturally. And mm-hmm. the behaviour in a young dog where you go, you need to pay attention to this now because this is going to be hell in the future. Yes. And part of that comes from experience, but part of that comes from what is a juvenile response that will mature naturally and what is a juvenile response that's going to mature in such a way that you're never going to be able to manage it? Mm, that's a that's a gift I'd love for sure. It's a it's yeah, a challenge, yeah. all right. It's a challenge. And the I want doesn't get applies to dogs as much as children. Mm. I want it now. Okay. Oh well, maybe not then. Because <laughs> you don't know where that goes. <laughs> yeah. But yes, look for you know the sheepdog that wants to. Oh, there's movement. Movement. I need to go after it. That's not going to fade. That is such an instinctively strong behaviour. Mm. It's going to get much, much, much stronger and it needs to be managed whilst it's in its juvenile stage. Right. Um, so any of these behaviours that are innate and likely to be self-rewarding need to be managed as early as possible. Yes. Behaviours that are exploratory and going nowhere may well fade by themselves. Okay. I, I wish I could categorise it better, but you've got to pretty pretty much look at each behaviour. Yeah. yeah. And of course, if we if we think about the the channel, we can even channel those ones that may fade, uh, but it's, but it's a matter of priorities. And and I think that's the the thing that I'm learning a lot at the moment is mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. I have this list of all of the learning that that will help her move through the world, and and there's constantly new things being added, but also things being moved up the list as as priorities and. There's always the worry, I suppose, that you're going to overlook something. (laughs) 
Yes, there's so much for them to learn, so much that you need to divert learning towards mm. something more creative. I mean, something yeah. that was <laughs> interesting, and I tried to experiment on this, is when they're, they're baby puppies, one of the first things they hear when their ears are starting to open is their siblings sucking on a teat. Yes. Right. Yep, so that, that yeah. noise that people use to create interest in a puppy, they'll do what I call the kissy-kissy sucking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they'll do it to children. Ooh. I suppose in a way it's a sort of a response that we would do because to that child or to that puppy, the sound, that's one of the first most important sounds they hear because it's associated with pleasure and yes. the milk bar is open. Mm. So of course they're going to respond to it, like, oh, somebody's getting some milk, I'm not, I'm in there, get in there, get in there straight away. Mm. And it's also associated with the pleasure they're getting at that time. So we end up with the puppy that, at eight weeks old, when they hear the kissy kissy sucker sucker teeth noise, they will go, mm. yeah, where, 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 where can I get it? And I remember doing this experiment, standing well above the puppies, giving that noise, and they started racing around like mad has. You know, there was no bitch around for them to yes. suck on, but they're all looking around. Where is it? Where, 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 where? Uh, so I wanted to see how long I could maintain this without the, you know, the subsequent milk coming. And it fades naturally at about 13 or 14 weeks. Okay. But if you want to keep it, well, by all means, keep it. But you need to follow up with a reward. But yes. I, I do find the whole sucky, sucky noise a bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Once you've seen that sort of image and you see grown-up people going at a dog, I'm sort of, mm. yeah, okay, not for me, thank you very much. <laughs> Doesn't work for me. <laughs> so, yeah, some stuff and responses will naturally fade, like the need to bite everything to protect yourself. Yeah. The grabby phase tends to reduce. Yes, right. the, the response to, you know, teat sucking tends to reduce. But for a collie, using their eye, not going to reduce, it's going to get stronger. No. So the minute their eye, their eye, you know, low flowing aircraft, skateboards, traffic, you're, you've got to manage it straight away. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for listening. We shall be following Nika's first year through the podcasts. If you would like to learn more, please have a wander around our website, learningaboutdogs.com. We have many, many articles and lots of courses uh, that you can explore. We also have Facebook pages, which is Kay Lawrence and Learning About Dogs. So if you have any questions on first year topics um, or anything else you'd like us to focus on, please use the Facebook pages and ask. See you next time.